Hello Neil. Hello YouTube. This is Sienda. Sienda right? Um, Neil sent me a video some weeks and weeks and weeks ago, two months ago, and I'm only replying to it now, which makes me a terrible, terrible YouTube mate. Um, but here I am now. Anyway, um, Neil sent sent me an article about um, why maths te about math education in South Africa, and I think as well in Botswana. With the way the title is why maths teachers bunk classes and I think it's ridiculous it is completely ridiculous it does not make any sense and they use the bunking as an excuse as to why the students are doing poorly and then they say that this, the teachers do not teach because they have trouble teaching grade 6 numeracy I can't believe it I can't believe it it is completely ridiculous I can teach grade 6 numeracy. Neil can teach grade 6 numeracy. Hell, we can teach abstract algebra. And I suck at it. Okay, I don't suck at it. But my point is, there's absolutely no excuse for not doing your job. Um, I understand, however, that they are absent because they're at union meetings and department meetings. Once again, this does not make any sense. I don't understand it. Um, how can a person that is supposed to be doing that job be in a meeting to save their job. I don't understand it. And I understand that, yes, um, they're in union meetings because they want better raises. And I'll get to that. I'll get to that. But for now, it's going to be an angry rant about that's what, how poorly the job is being done. And this is a recurring theme. What you find in many um, government departments in South Africa, from what I've heard from, and from Botswana, I can tell you personally, and from other countries, is that government employees or public servants don't take their job seriously. They don't have the spirit of giving back to the people that they should have. And whose fault is that? It's the fault of the leaders, of the leaders I can say. Um, you have ministers and heads of department. I don't know what they're called in South Africa, but here it's a minister. And these people kind of have this attitude of, it's my job, I'm doing it so I can get paid, or I'm doing it for myself rather than thinking of it as what it is, which is a public service job, that you are supposed to be enacting the policies that your government um, set up when they promised to take your country to the next level, or whatever it is they promised these days. So I cannot think of a single reason why a job must not be done. So in this case, we're talking about something that is super duper important. This is maths education. This is education, period. Now, as a maths major, personally, I love maths, but I also see the practicality about it. Um, what maths does, besides give you a headache from, <laughs> which is what most people think of it as, which is also something I need to address and I, I don't like the way that maths is thought of. But anyway, maths gives you problem solving thinking. It allows you to um, form solutions that may appear to be abstract um, in the basic sense, but really are ways of solving problems that seem impossible. You can only solve a difficult problem through abstract thinking, is what I believe. So what math does, it, it allows you to do that. It teaches you how to do that. So if your teacher seems to have a problem teaching you that, I mean, you're in trouble, to be completely honest with you. I mean, I have respect for all the other subjects, but at the end of the day, Maths is at the center of all science. I'm not going to lie to you about this. It is economics as well, finance, things that, that rule the world, things that quote unquote matter. Not to say anything else doesn't matter, but those are the things that matter, that change the world. Technology is based on mathematics. I can even tell you now that that is actually how we all got to get one quote unquote science around the world. That is how Western science um, progressed. It is when the math systems from China and South Asia and North Africa and all these places kind of aligned and now they used one math system. I think the Arabs may have been the ones that introduced it. But anyway, it is this math system that allowed uniformity of science. When math, when science began to be based on physics began to be based and you know, all the other sciences began to be based on, you know, decimal um, number system on normal not normal, but basic number rules and laws and things like that, and it could all be explained with equations. That is how science progressed. Now, that just shows you how important mathematics is. 
I've already shown it to you today what, how important it is. It's important for you to solve problems. Two, it's important for the advancement of technology. And that is particularly important to the African continent at this time, at this juncture in, in our history, where we are now um, supposed to be anyway, taking charge of our own technological advancements. Not that we didn't have any in the past, but now we are in a better position, I think, to utilize all our resources and push ourselves further. But now if we have a situation where students are being left behind or they are being kind of shortchanged because um, the systems that are supposed to keep teachers happy or teachers that are supposed to keep the system happy are not doing good, none of those people are doing that job, that is what happens, we are shortchanged. So, um, I, I believe that this is something that we should change in our lifetime. We should change the thinking that is around mathematics. Uh, I, for one, have found that every time I mention that I'm a math major, people go, you know, as if it's some, some un unbelievably difficult field. And I hear a lot of people say, oh, I hate math, or I hate, you know, algebra, whatever. Things that go to basically the core of progress, especially in the very technology kind of techno technology, I can't say technology, technolo whatever, <laughs> technologically um, centered progress kind of in a, <laughs> oh my God, okay, you know, in a, I need to cut that out, okay, you know, especially if we're in a, an era now that it, in which progress is very much based on technological advancement, it does not make any sense to me for us to be unable to lean on the one thing that really does have the hugest effect on where we go tomorrow, which is mathematics. Um, in my lifetime, I hope to see that thinking change. I hope to see Africa become the next Asia. I hope to see Africa become um, the next kind of technology hub for the globe. And if we are scared of math, that is not going to happen. I have to tell you the truth about that. It's not going to happen. Um, another thing I want to bring up is the amount of money or the way that the schooling system is run. I really believe that if you have a, and I don't think I'm being ridiculous here, if you have a poor public schooling system, that, result, that, that directly translates to a poor and, and, and unable to contribute to society, society in the future. You understand? Um, you get people that graduate from these schools with having learned nothing but how to absorb something and regurgitate it without really thinking about it, without analyzing. These are people that are unable to challenge the status quo. And right now, Africa is run by hippos. And we cannot, no, we should not, no, we cannot afford to have people that cannot think critically, which is what maths does. It gives you the ability to think critically about something and challenge it. Now, if you teach maths like you're teaching history, or you teach maths like you, which is what I, I suspect is being done, one, you, can, you cannot understand it if it's being taught like anything else. And two, you gain actually nothing from, have, from being able to solve equations on a paper. It should be taught revolutionarily, you know? It, it's, it's an amazing subject. So if now we're taking it so lightly and, you know, we're not thinking about it so much and it's okay for teachers to walk out of class and say that they can't teach grade six, numeracy is <laughs> ridiculous. It is laughable at its best and at its worst it is terrifying. So this is something that we should think about. This is 2013. Let's make this the year now where we really, really um, challenge the status quo in terms of education. As a Motswana, I feel there's absolutely no reason for us to have such a poor public schooling system. It is actually ridiculous. But somebody has to ask for more. You know, we have to Oliver Twist these people. Someone has to ask for more. Someone has to ask for better, and that's our role now in this year. I personally didn't go to a public school, but I, I, I have seen the, the people that went there, and I've spoken to a lot of people that went there, and I've been to those schools on site visits for my own personal kind of thing. And it's not, it's not a pretty picture. It's not. Now, I, I implore you to read that article because it also kind of shows, um, gives you a bit of a picture of the Botswana public school system, which would be very helpful for you to kind of understand what I'm saying. Either way, we can have a first world country. You know, we can have a first world Africa. We just have to believe we deserve it, A. B, we have to fight for it because the hippos in charge, 
you know, the the leaders of our con of our of the countries in this continent have no vested interest in how critical we become. You understand? They don't they are very, very okay with giving us the bare minimum, which is the ability to write your own name or, you know, add three plus five, you know, add money, whatever. But we must ask for more, you know? So that's all I've got to say. Oh, it's ten minutes. Oh no. Okay, it's fine. Um Neil I like the color of your wall, it's really cute. Um, I like that color, is it? Anyway, yes. So, <laughs> thank you so much for making that video and thank you for watching this video and I'm so sorry it took so long. And this is my first non-book review video. I hope you like it. If you do like it, please, um, you can give me some more articles to read and I can kind of angry rant my reply to all of them. So that's kind of fun for me. Um, I hope this has been helpful and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sienda Wright, out. But I have a website, sienderwrites.com as usual. Um, I also have a Google Plus thing. I think kind of, I found out that I have one when Neil added me and my phone was like, you have a Google Plus. And I was like, oh, okay. So I have a Google Plus now, Sienda Wrights as well. I also have a Facebook page now. I know it's 2013, but yes, I have a Facebook page now. Uh, Twitter as usual, Sienda Wrights. And yeah, um, enjoy the rest of your week. And bye. <laughs>